new to you every day because you have experiences that relate to these 14 points every day. Kobina Bantu Shango, uh, the Southern Region Representative of the African People's Socialist Party. And we want to welcome you uh, to the political education of the 14 point platform for uh, the African People's Socialist Party. And, and like I said, I'm the, I'm the Southern Regional Representative. And today we're going to be studying point number 11. We're going to, I think it's going to be always a dynamic discussion and love to hear everybody's participation. And uh, I know we're going to be expecting more people on the call, uh, people on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, uh, make sure that um, if you got any questions, comment that you put in the chat so we can get that uh, out on Zoom as well. But I think this is one of the fastest growing political educations uh, uh, in the Southern region, at least. You know what I mean? So uh, glad to see everybody here. Uh, like I said, we're going to be studying point number 11 of the African People's Social Party. Uh, 14 point platform and you can find uh, the 14 point platform in every Burning Spear newspaper uh, that is produced. So get your Burning Spear newspaper uh, at theburningspear.com. Uh, uh, theburningspear.com. You can subscribe to the Burning Spear. You can get the Burning Spear. And, uh, you know, let's, let's just briefly, um, I know everybody is, 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 uh, coming back to the screen. So we just want to do a, a quick, uh, just a quick, you know, say who you are, where you from, and, and, and that's for the people that may see this later or even maybe looking at it on Facebook and for other people that's coming in. Uhuru. Uhuru, my name is Kundai. Um, I'm from Nigeria. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. I'm a member of the African People's Socialist Party. Um, assigned to the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project and Zinzle Consignment, which is the institution in which this um, study is being hosted. Uh, yeah, my name is Nayindu, and I'm a member of the African People's Social Party, also the uh, <laughs> photo editor for the Burning Spear, Fort Myers, Florida. Hello, I'm Saeed Kamba. I am in Winter Springs, Florida, and I am a member of the African People's Socialist Party and also the African National Women's Organization. Uhuru. Uhuru. I am uh, Queen Mother Kashiba. I am the New Black Panther Party, and um, I'm, I'm in Norfolk, Virginia. Uhuru. Charlie Square. Uhuru. It's Charlie Square. I'm in the African People's Socialist Party, Southern Region. And I'm from Louisiana. Uhuru. Hey, Uhuru. My name is uh, Dexter Mlamwingu. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I'm a member of the African People's Socialist Party. And my assignment is building the uh, International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement in the world. Uhuru comrades, I appreciate that. And, and uh, there's a few other people that, that, that's working on getting in. Uh, we make sure they get, they get the link. Uh, but, you know, we're gonna have a dynamic discussion. I'm looking forward to this discussion. And the more, just like, 
just like uh, if you ever played in the sports, they say the more you put in it, the more you get out of it. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's, that's you know, why the chairman always say, uh, you know, work is primary. And I have to salute, you know, my leadership, Chairman O'Malley is a teller and uh, DC owner and the whole natural National Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party. And without further ado, let's jump into it. So if you can pull up on the screen, um, point number 11 of the 14 point uh, platform. And um, and when they, as soon as you get that up, we're gonna, we're gonna get into it, get into the discussion. Uhuru. Uhuru. Yeah. Can somebody read that? I read. We want the U.S. and the international European ruling class and states to pay African and African people for centuries of genocide, oppression, and enslavement of our people. We believe that the U.S. and European civilization was born from and are presently maintained by the horrendous stuff of human and material resources from Africa and its people. We also believe that this stuff of human and material resources is responsible for the present underpopulation and underdevelopment of Africa and of people in a political servitude, material impoverishment, and a cultural disunity uh, and disintegration of African people throughout the world. We believe that Africa and African people are due reparation, just, just economic compensation, billions of dollars which must be paid to the African, the organization of African unity or any of the legitimate international organization of African people for the equitable distribution for the development of Africa. We also believe that reparations must be distributed to the various independent African states dispersed throughout the world and to the legitimate representatives of the African people forcibly dispersed throughout the world who have not yet won liberation. Oh, appreciate that coming right in. You can do. And before we move to the to the main points, I want to just touch on a couple of things in this point. Uh, you know, because I know uh, a lot of times, you know, people don't understand and and or struggle with. I know when I first started learning more about the struggle, I really struggled and, and was grappling with the whole class question. You know, and. Uh, you know, when we say the ruling class, like what does that mean? And, and what are the other classes? Uh, and you hear the working class a lot, which we are the party of the, we are the vanguard party of the African working class. And so then you have what people, what you, what people probably hear most, most often is, is something about the middle class and just being able to understand class structure, uh, just on even on a basic level and understand that the people in power are the ones that uh, set the terms for everything else. That would be called the ruling class. They have possession of, of uh, all the resources uh, at their disposal in, in, a, in, a, in a society uh, uh, and the working class, which are the, always are the majority of, of, of uh, the population. You know, they are the producers. They're the ones that have to sell their labor uh, to make a living. You know, uh, uh, where you you know you might know uh, people that work two and three jobs just to be able to maintain, but they have we have to sell our labor, you know, just to even be able to survive. And um, but the ruling class don't do that; they don't work, you know. But they'll turn around and call us call the working class lazy and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And 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 because they want to have a monopoly on defining reality, you know, they create those type of things. But you know, those are uh, some things. And the other thing I wanted to point out is that, um, you know, uh, this is why we have to define our own reality because when left up to the oppressor and the ruling class, they, uh, they attempt to uh, say that we are, the working class is, is, is uh, on welfare and, and, and stuff like that. But the reality is that they are the ones that are, are uh, the parasite and leeching off of uh, off of you know everybody else you know and we have to be able to see what's going on and sum that up. But I wanna I wanna open that up for a discussion. 
and, and just see, you know, how people see it or people got questions, comments, thoughts, or anything like that. So hold on. Any thoughts around the class uh, structure or any, anything about this point before we go to the main points? So that means it's clear. I like, I like that. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's move to the main point. All right, so the main ideas of, of point number 11 is that the US and Europe were born from the born and maintained by the theft of the human and material resources from Africa and African people. This is why African people everywhere fa face servitude, impoverishment, and cultural discontinuity uh, and disintegration. Uh, Disintegration. African people are due reparations uh, from the US and European ruling class and state, which must be paid uh, to a legitimate and international uh, organization of African people in the struggle for liberation. I want to open that up and see uh, if anybody has any questions or thoughts around that. Let me ask this question. Like, do we do we understand what reparations? Can anybody tell me what reparations stand for? Repairing the damage. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Repairing the damage. So, what damage would need to be repaired? Um, everything that was stolen from us, and not just stolen, but um, and and I mean not just stolen in terms of like like physical resources, like all of the gold, the rubber, the coltan, the diamonds, you know, um, while all those things need to be repaired as well. But um, like even like repairing the, um, the, what's the word? Um, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like, like a socially, you know, like emotionally, socially, like how we, in, you know, interact, all that has to be repaired. We here in, you know, in the U.S., you know, how is that repaired, you know, and not just by, um, you know, like reparations, not just giving my family, you know, you know, the, some white man giving my mama, you know, 40 acres and a mule or, or you know, uh, writing off a check or something because his, because his grandpa owned my grandma or whatever, but, um, you know, uh, reparations going to, you know, organizations or um, an organization like the African People's Socialist Party that's working towards the complete liberation of African people. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. Now, Unite. Anybody else? I see a couple people looking like they're ready to jump at the camera. Cause we want our shit back. <laughs> yeah, and and just to think about in 1982, the African People's Social Party, led by Chairman O'Malley Teller, did a tribunal where it was summed up for the first time that in labor alone, that the U.S. owed uh, us 4.2 trillion dollars. That was in 1982. That was shit. That's almost how long ago is that? That's almost what 30 years? Is it 40 years? 40 years. Uh, that's almost 40 years ago uh, to this day, you know what I'm saying? And and uh, that was in 1982 in labor alone, not to even talk about the actual resources that they took and, 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 and the horror and the terror that we had to go through, you know, uh, uh, and this is why African people are poor, you know, because th what they would try to do, and we'll talk a little bit about this as we go through, what they try to do in defining our reality is to say, that we poor because we don't have the ad, uh, education, or we poor because we frugal, or we poor because of uh, X, Y, Z, you know what I'm saying? But the reality, the only reason the African people are poor anywhere on earth is because uh, we've been colonized, because they have stole all our resources. So they have been, they have, uh, they have, you know, been taking, taking our, our babies and locking them up, you know what I'm saying? Killing them. And this is why this is why we find ourselves in these conditions that we that we face. It ain't because somebody frugal or somebody pants were sagging or this or that. You know what I'm saying? And this is 
And we have to be able to understand that these are military terms that get us to be able to uh, be at war with each other so we don't see who the real enemy is and what the real struggle is about. You know, so, you know, we want to be clear around some of those things. So let's uh, move, to, move to question, the first question. Uh, all right, so question number one, we're going, we're going, uh, we're going to call on, we're going to call on comrade Charlie Square for question number one, U.S. and European civilization were born from A, the discovery of electricity, B, the theft of human and material resources from Africa, C, racist ideas in the minds of white people, or D, None of the above. Tyler Square. Her comrade resources from Africa. Uh, that's how the country was born from theft. They stole resources, and which people are resources, their labor is resources, and they they brought them here to this country, just like they have done in lots of the uh, Western and Eastern borders of this, of this world. They take resources from nations that are not capable of defending themselves. They bring, they go over and, and get those resources and bring them back to this country, which makes this country wealthy. But the biggest resource that they stole were Human beings were Africans from the from the continent of Africa, and brought them back here, and they worked for nothing. That's a huge resource. You know, uh, when you don't have to pay for the labor that that you produce. You know, well, that not them produce, but that we produce. Yeah, our, our people, our ancestors. And mm. uh, you're talking about four hundred years. I mean, there is no amount of money you can give back in reparation for that amount of time of suffering and oppression. You can't give that back. What Ooh. they need to do is, is give us, is allow us to uh, raise our own nation. I mean, they don't have to allow us to do it, but that is the only way it's gonna, we're going to uh, benefit from all of those years of, of uh, slavery and oppression. The only way you're going to benefit is to raise a nation, raise a nation and take and, and, you know, get the education we need, the resources we need, you know, get out of the way and let us do what we have to do. Cause uh, you know, the oppression has got to stop. If it, you know, we got to stop the oppression and what well, we can't just stop. We can't just stop what we're doing to work on making them stop oppressing us, we have to raise our nation back to where uh, we can be self-sufficient. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right on, comrade, right on. You know what I'm saying? I want to open it up. Uh, appreciate that, Tyler, Tyler Square. Uh, I want to open it up, see if anybody else had any comments around this or wanted to expound or uh, elaborate on what comrade Tyler Square just said. Um, I just got one thing. Um, first of all, who are comrade Charlie? And um, one one way that I kind of see like you know reparations happening, you know, um, in a in a liberated world is like you know how like okay like Haiti pays reparations to France because 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 they whipped their ass and so um. And so Haiti today still pays reparations to France. Um, but what that does is also keep Haiti from being able to progress because I can't remember how much, what, like what large percentage of like their, uh, like the net income of, of Haiti goes to France. But, um, and it's, uh, I kind of see it, I don't know, or see how, you know, other people see it, but like that happening in the same way, but by the African nation to the European nation in a, you know, in, um, in a liberated world, and where it also keeps the, the the colonizer nation from being able to progress too, because they gonna they gonna have to continue to pay 
back reparations. And even if it's for a thousand years or whatever it is, they they gonna have to pay, you know, not not just once we get our shit back, they gonna have to pay just like Haiti still gotta pay um France today. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, uh-huh. I just, Conrad, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and I just wanted to add to that because like like Conrad, I unite with what Conrad Kundai just said. And and just to the to, to say that, like she said, they forced a US and France forced Haiti to pay France back for overturning slavery. For overturning slavery. For your liberation, you have to pay for your liberation. You know what I'm saying? And 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 this is what they call legal and legitimate is that, but when they talk about actually enslaving and dispersing Africans to Haiti, they don't think that the attack on Africa to get Africans to Haiti deserves reparation, but somehow because Africans didn't want to be enslaved and they overturn slavery, they owe France reparation. Does that make sense to y'all? Yeah. Like what you saying, or the fact that they're paying reparations? I mean, no, yeah, comrade, I mean, that, that don't make any. It don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? It don't. It don't make sense at all. That I, if you ask me, I I say they robbed Haiti. They robbed them. You know, you you should have to pay money for freedom. Nah. But I I I understand why Haiti did that because they didn't want to fight. Uh, you know, they didn't want to go to war. So they paid. But that's robbery. That ain't that ain't no different than than uh, you know uh, stealing, you know, taking our resources. It's 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 piracy, and that's what they were good at piracy. So uh, well, I, you know, I have to commend Haiti for that. I mean, they they were were they were thinking about their their own lives, and they were thinking about their you know building back. So, but you know. You can always get things. You can always get things. But freedom, you can't buy freedom. No. You have you and, have to you have to you have to live free. And, and I think we should be clear that that you know the only reason that we that we the Africans will be forced to do any of that, just the same way that you know you show up in court is because you know we have not develop the level of organization that we have the power to tell them, hell no, nah, we ain't paying you. We, we coming for what's ours. We want all our shit back. You know what I'm saying? And and this is why, you know, cause cause that's like saying, if somebody break in your house and rob you and then you got to pay them for robbing you. You know what I'm saying? That don't make sense. You know, so, but we, the only reason that we would be in that situation is because we have to unite and develop the or, the type of organization, and that's what the African People's Social Party is in the process of doing. That we have the power. If they even they one day won't even have the courage to say nothing like that, and and then we not only saying that we're not paying reparations, we coming for everything that belongs to us. Every we coming for what's ours. You know what I'm saying? So let's move let's move to point um, number two. I mean question number two, and then we're gonna you know continue this discussion. I appreciate that, Charlie Square. All right, so uh, Queen Mother, this one's for you. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't, we, we, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't no, it ain't no study. We ain't got Queen Mother coming, coming in here ready to spit some fire, boy. So the U.S. and European ruling class owe Africa and African people a reparations, b affirmative action, c higher wages, or d none of the above. Reparations. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Right on. Me- I choose reparation because they took everything from us and now it's time for us to get it. We got to get it back. We we can't depend on them to give it back to us because we got to get it back by any means necessary. Ahuru. Ahuru. That's real talk. That's real talk. Anybody want to expound on that? I would say this, that uh, when you look at the balance of being reparation, you need to take in the other two, you know, you know, all over there to fall in line. You know, you don't even need the other two to say reparation, just like she said. Right on, right on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. 
I unite with uh, Queen Mother and um, and everyone on this point. Um, just reading it makes me think about last week's lesson where we were talking about how um, capitalism and colonialism was was born out of the labor and theft of African people. And so in order for them to thrive, they had to steal us, steal our resources. And so the only way to repair that is for through reparations. And so it can't be something we're saying, well, yeah, we we stole you, we stole your labor, we we benefit from it. So we're gonna give you affirmative action so you could become like us. And even with affirmative action, it only is, addresses a small percentage of African people, and even when it does address, it does not um, give us a conclusion of, um, of our liberation or freedom. It's only giving you, quote unquote, flexibility within the capitalistic um, system. Higher wages is never going to give us back what we have because they, again, they took our labor, they took our resources, they took our education, they stole all these things and, and in, or, in order for them to thrive. And I think that's where we need to drive home with um, our, you know, when we're having this conversation is that they're thriving off of us. And so we have to stop and strangle that and, and pull it up and say, you know more, you can't keep taking from us. And that's what revolution is to me. So, it, so you pay me more money, it's not, you know, I'm gonna take the higher wages, in this capitalistic situation, but never think or don't think that I'm not holding you accountable for the fact that you know that this is that we're still living in a colonial um, dominated society, and so we have to be able to um, uproot that in order to honestly become become whole and begin to heal. Uhuru, 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 comrade, uh, Sister Sayed, Sister and Queen Mother, and. And you do, I unite 100%. I will say that like, and I think, um, Saeed, if, you, if it's possible, could you like, cause it was a lot of things that I think if you can break some of that down in turn, cause like when you talk about colonialism and, and uh, you know, cause people can, that may not be aware, you know, they say that this is, you know, we're in a, we're in a, a free market society or, you know, we're in capitalists where you have the opportunity to to thrive and this type of thing. Can you break some of those terms down? Well, as far as colonialism and yeah. capital, I don't have a, a, a great definition right in front of me, but I'll do my best. But colonialism is um, is 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 a um, it's a European concept of creating false borders and to separate. And so um, in order for them to gain, you know, for them to prosper, as I was saying earlier, they had to create this system, as some people call a system of oppression, which is colonialism, where they have gone into outside of borders and went to other countries. And that's what colonialism is, is going to other countries and dominating and putting your own um, government and your own culture into somewhere where you pretty much don't belong. So an example would be um, what we were talking about earlier with Haiti, that they colonized Haiti. They took slaves from Africa into Haiti, named it Haiti, and then this, and created a culture of, of, um, of plantations and and labor so that they so they can create a society for them to prosper. But in the same hand, if the 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 working class um, and the slaves did not have the same uh, benefits or privilege or anything that they had because their only sole purpose was to work. And so colonialism did that all over the globe. And that's why when we look at um, African internationalism through the lens that we have to unite because we're all affected by this this system of you no know, which is colonialism where you know it's false borders where they just dominate a place where they don't belong so that's my understanding of colonialism oh right on comrade i appreciate that i, th I think it's i think it's helpful to, to to break those things down uh because imperialism colonialism would, would define things in a way that's so ambiguous like you don't like you don't really have a clear definition of what it is, and I and I appreciate you breaking that down and, and helping understand, and and I think this process even help us to understand like why that they owe us. You know, what I'm saying we don't owe them nothing. They owe us. You know, and and uh, you know, we turn like Chairman O'Malley yesterday says we 
you know, African internationalism turned the world right, right side up and help us understand things for what they are. So let's move to question number three. And um, let's see, we got, we got a, a few new people that came onto the call. Um, so that's what's up. So we gonna, we gonna, I'm gonna get this one to, to this is gonna be a, a first time. Uh, Dexter be behind the scenes, we wanna get Dexter to answer question number three with reparation must be paid to the NAACP, the De Democratic Black Caucus, legitimate, legitimate representative of our liberation struggle or historically black college. Can you hear me, Dex? You're on mute if you're talking. Uhuru. Uhuru. Yes. So the reparations must be paid to C, the legitimate, represent, the legitimate representatives of our liberation struggle. And that's not the historically black colleges, it's not the NAACP, and it's not the Democratic Black Caucus. Can you tell us why it's not, can you tell us why it's not the other organization? Why it's not the NAACP? Of course, because uh, only um C is, is, is speaking about organizations that are are uh, genuinely operating in the interests of the masses of African people. And that's not the NWCP, which is since its, since its inception been a, a petty bourgeoisie organization. And a petty bourgeoisie organization can lead the, the African liberation struggle. Uhuru, Uhuru. Comrade Dexter, can you say what petty bourgeoisie is? Sure, yeah, petty bourgeoisie, it's, uh, you know, some um, some other terms used for the petty bourgeoisie is, uh, you know, middle class um, Negroes or, or sellouts. And it's basically um, a, uh, a sector of the African nation. So it's, it's a group, uh, a demographic within black, you know, among black people that, um, that are working in the interest of white power, in the interest of colonialism, the colonizer. And, uh, and, and you know, they advance themselves at the expense of the entire African nation. So at the expense of the masses of the people, they try to put themselves forward and uplift themselves. Uhuru, Uhuru. Yeah, I appreciate the explanation, comrade. Because I think, you know, they handpick, they handpick leaders and put them out in front of us right. now. You know what I'm saying? And I think this right here is the crux of, of I mean, if don't nothing else explain class, it's like these, this, this question right here explains class more than anything else. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jaquita, what do you think about this question? Quick, quick. <laughs> I would have to say, I agree with what, um, I forgot his name, what he just said. I really don't have Dexter. any. Yeah, Dexter, uh, <laughs> really having a thought on it, but I do agree with what he said. Uhuru. Leon, what you think, man? You're, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah, you might have to get out and come back in. Mike. Michael Athe. Uhuru. Uhuru. What do you think about this? What do you think about this about this question and, and 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 the answers that have been given thus far? Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, I guess uh the only thing I could add to um Dexter's what definition to uh, petty bourgeoisie would be to be like, what would that look like? Uh, you know, what would that look like uh, in real time, right? Um, and uh, what you would call those an opportunist, people that um, would say, uh, what, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to do something to help the black community, but it's just uh, on like a public platform and I'm just talking about something, but I'm not talking about revolution, but I'm getting money 
off of the problems that colonialism has made so I can get myself out of the problem that uh, colonialism has granted me as an individual <laughs> and as a collective, you know what I'm saying? So those would be, uh, you know, your people like Kevin Samuels and people like that, that think they're trying to do something good for the community, but their bottom line is how much money that they can make at the end of the day and not liberation. Because if we were, if we all did have that mindset of liberation, we would all be straight and we wouldn't have to worry about uh, making more money than the next man. Oh, right on, comrade. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I really want to, um, you know, just salute the answers that that's been given by everybody up to this point. And and like like I said, I think this this for me really helps explain because like your class interests, it 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 determines everything that you do, what your end goal is. And you'll hear us a lot of times, like the chairman say, you know, uh, you know. To what end? You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what you're doing, to what end? You know what I'm saying? And if you got somebody that, uh, if you got somebody that, uh, you know, has a middle class interest, and 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 or a ruling class interest, that is a uh, that interest conflicts with the working class interest. So when you have an organization like everybody was talking about like an NAACP that is put out in the front of people and say that they are the, the leaders uh, and stuff like that. They're not, they're, they're not really working in behalf of the people. And this is historically has been shown, you know what I'm saying? They working to try to get a bigger piece of the pie, but that doesn't work for the majority of, of, of people in everyday life. You know what I'm saying? Because everything that America got is at our expense. You know what I'm saying? It's at the working class expense. So we have to be able to understand that when people are talking about, you know, just uh, a vote or just be a part of the system in, in some type of way, as, that, as if there's no alternative, we have to say that we have a responsibility to build our own government. We have a responsibility to take power. We have a responsibility to, to, to work and guarantee our kids a future just like everybody else. And if anything short of that, you know what I'm saying? Then we we saying that we just want to be more comfortable slaves as opposed to, you know, fear niggas. All right, so we're gonna move, we're gonna move to question number uh four. <coughs> so uh I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out for anybody. What does this mean in relation to the objective conditions? of African people. What does this point, uh, when we talk about reparations and we talk about uh, that the US have, uh, you know, terrorized African people, what does this mean in, in, relate, in relation to the objective conditions of African people? Uhuru, if I may. <laughs> uh, <Ooh>. um, <laughs> It's funny because uh, the first thing that came to my mind um, <laughs> when you said that was a newly opened uh, local spot here that's ran uh, by an African. But like the uh, chairman said, it's like them doing that. What does that do? You know, what end? What's the end of it? Is it just so your family can break your individual curse of quote unquote uh, generational, you know, poverty? And things like that or is it really to like <laughs> in the poverty of all people <laughs> i mean well all african people <laughs> more specifically <laughs> you know what i'm saying and that it just when you when you said that um and uh that's the first thing that came to my mind and i was like man the objective and the end goal is very uh very critical into like you said your everyday life your everyday moves um it governs what you do on a daily basis as an African. And then that will in turn let other Africans know, are you just African in pigmentation or are you African in mind as well? So that's all I wanted to say, Uhuru. Uhuru, right on. I appreciate that comrade, Mike. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru queen mother. What I want to say about that, that is about our African people is that they go over there, they steal all their resources, all their golds and minerals and, and diamonds and everything. 
and you know that's a condition that African people are going through it. And plus, the African people and the ones here and the ones in Africa, they're way behind from where we at. They they, they got to catch up. We we are farther in technology and everything more than them than they are. And, and they they are uh, ambassador or president is keeping them. On, on like 10 years behind. So they 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 resource and everything they doing is not even uh, up to the standard that we are. They they still behind. And plus they everything that's rich is over there for them. They can't even touch it. They, they, they sealed it up so they can't even touch it. They, they don't mess they did it so they can't get nothing. They got gold, gold mountains and all of that stuff over there and and, and minerals and stones and all that. And they can't even get it, can't even touch it. Uhuru. Uhuru. Anybody else want to touch on that? Appreciate that, Queen Mother. Uhuru, comrade. I, I just like to say something that's just eating away at me because, uh, you know, of what we went through in, in our entire uh, slavery uh, period in this country. We were, we were denied so much. We were denied education. We were denied uh, any patents on any invention that was, was uh, you know, were, were invented by any, any, any black slave. And if you had any ideas uh, and if you had any inventions that you created, you, had, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, claim it. You couldn't, you couldn't have a patent on it. So I say that in light of all of that, besides the reparations that they owe us, we should be able to go to college for free. We shouldn't have to pay taxes. We should, be, we should have businesses and, a, and affordable housing uh, districts, you know. We should, it's, it's a lot more they owe us than reparations. I say it's a lot more that they owe us. And and like, <laughs> they owe us everything they got. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Yendu. <laughs> no, I, I was just, I was just agreeing with him. You know, they owe us everything they got. <laughs> yeah. Right and on. Then, you right know, on. idea, of, you know, idea of edu educate. You know, that's why the main reason we want to, uh, we want to get rid of the system, because the system is built to reinforce what they want and what they got. You know. And so that's the main reason for, you know, we have to overthrow the system because the system is not, you know, you can't be no petty bourgeois because the only thing petty bourgeoisie want to do, they want to replace the people that are ruling us. They want to rule us. You know, that, that, that segment of the population, they're not for no liberation. Well, they're for liberation. Um, the, the rulers, the way they can rule, you know, but they're going to be the same thing, you know. They'll just be that's that neo-colonial side there, you know. That's what it will be. That's it. That's it. That's real talk. And, that, and that's something that we have to understand is that, you know, it don't matter who the pilot is, an airplane gonna fly. You know what I'm saying? It don't, it don't matter, you know, and, and, and it don't matter if you put, you know, uh, somebody, a, 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 a race car driver in the, in the, in the seat of, a, of the pilot, that the, you ain't gonna race that plane, you know what I'm saying? And, and so we have to be able to understand that that's how the system functions. It, 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 it functions at our expense. And the only way that it progresses is by taking and stealing your stuff. You know what I'm saying? And and so, you know, it had like like Yindu said, it has to be overturned. Um yeah, so we we'll won't move. Uh comrade Camillo, uh, River, did you have anything that you wanted to say? I don't know if you can, I, I only know, I hope I'm saying your name right. All right, that's what's up. We're gonna we're gonna move. If you want if you wanna uh if you have anything, just unmute and, and, and let us know. Comrade Saeed, how do you see this reflected in the work of the African People's Social Party and the Huru movement, whether it's a campaign program or et cetera? Uhuru. Uhuru, um, is as you learn more about the African People's Socialist Party, that um we are um an organization of organization, that we have a regional strategy, and the only way to reach our liberation is through a regional strategy, and that's through organization and, and leadership. So I do salute my leadership, uh Chairman Omani Yatella, who has uh, 
um, given us the structure and the blueprint in order to uh, build dual and contending um, forces. And so uh, we have the Haruba movement where there's different campaigns and different mass organizations. Uh, one of them I am a part of, which is the African National Women's Organization, where we bring African women into the political life, no matter where you are on the globe, in the continent, and in, in, in this country, um, where we um, address the special oppression that affects African women. Then um, then there's Impedum, which is the overall, um, is, is the, the movement within the movement, how I look at it. Um, there's, they have different campaigns around on this very subject that we're talking about today is about reparations. And we can, you know, um, so the party has different uh, campaigns that we work on. Um, another one that ANWA works on is the REST CPS, where we're addressing the state, state sanctioned kidnapping of, of, of our children. And so in order to, we, it's, you know, it's okay to go to demonstrations. It's okay to, you know, read a newspaper here and there, you know, those things help to educate us, but what are we doing with it? As uh, Comrade Kobina had mentioned earlier, to what end? And um, that's what the Aruba movement and these different campaigns and the African People's Socialist Party uh, gives us is a, a structure in order to, um, to, to begin to govern ourselves. So we're not just out here, we're not a club, or anything like that. We're a party, we're a political party because we are aiming to govern ourselves. And we understand um, through the lens of African internationalism what it's going to take in order to do that. And one of the things is one, reparations, two, going through this 14 point platform that we're talking about every Thursday to learn what we want, what we believe, and how we can build these forces so that um, you'll see um, our liberation reflected in, in, in the Huru movement. The Huru. Oh, appreciate that, comrade. And uh, I appreciate the explanation and breaking it down for us. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, comrade, uh, about to say comrade Kundai got got something to say too. She got, she said, she said Alabama got something to say. <laughs> yes, yes, come on, <laughs> belly. <laughs> right. Um, now, are you, um, are you with, um, Comrade Sai, uh, you know, just perform, and I just want to, um, uh, you know, piggyback off that and, 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 and add to that too, um, you know, around the question of, of reparations, you know, what's seen in the work that we do in the Uhuru movement. And I want to, uh, second Sai and salute and really raise up, um, our chairman, the leader of the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Omalia Shatella for um you know the 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 um tribunal that was head all the way back in what year was it Kobina? 82 in 1982 around the question of reparations and now today in 2021 you know we see all the a lot of these um politicians you know they have to talk about reparations because of the work of this movement um director uh the director of uh our uh, department of agitation and propaganda akile um um, Comrade Akile and I, you know, ran on a uh, ran in um, St. Petersburg, Florida, and you know, on her platform was about reparations. And so they can't these politicians now talk about reparations or people like Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden talk about higher wages as if that's that's some sort of um, uh, that's symbolic to like reparations or something, and it's not. And the, the platform that we run our party members on strategically, not because Akile just wanted to be a politician in the city of St. Petersburg, Florida, and she probably has no desire whatsoever to do that, but it's a strategy of the African People's Socialist Party to, regardless if we, if we win the, those campaigns or not, but it's, it's, a, um, it's a strategy to, to influence the masses on, on our call for reparations, along with you know the other 14 points of our platform, but um, specifically, you know, pertaining to this point around the question of reparations and these politicians can't ignore it. And so then they try to get in front of it again and say higher wages or this is what reparations actually is. This is what socialism actually is and it's, and it's not, is what we run our party members on. And also we have the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. We can't, can't nobody else talk about reparations and they ain't, and, and ain't organized now one white person to not give you as an individual money, but to give uh, an organization that represents African liberation right. Resources, uh, huh? I just you name. Oh, sorry. R resources on a regular basis, and and the Uhuru Solidarity Movement has existed for decades. And um, Comrade uh, Chairwoman Penny Hess is a white woman who works has been working side by side with the chairman or under under the underneath the leadership of the chairman for over forty years. 
around the question of reparations. I don't know one, I don't even know one white person that that's even, that you could even trust that long, but it's because of prince, it's because of the principle and objective relationship um, that's been, that the chairman has really developed with these, these white people to not feel sorry for us because again, cause they great granddaddy own my great grandma or whatever, but because they, but because of, they understand that today, right now in 2021, that everything that they have, or like as the chairman say, every bit of food that's in their fridge is our food, belongs to us. And everything that they that they own is because they stand on our back still today, not because of, or in addition to what happened 500 years ago, but for what's happening right now today on the streets in poor working class communities and how we live. And so when we talk about like the work that the African People's Socialist Party is doing around the question of reparations, we're not talking about it and we're not just condemning Bernie Sanders, fuck with Joe Biden and all them talking about, but we have an actual, the, our party has created an actual whole organization of white people, of a whole organization, not a group, not a, again, not somebody just feels sorry, but a whole group of white people that have united to go into the, the go into the colonizer community and take back our reparations and, and, and give us back what's, what's ours. And I think that's not a small thing. And we can't have a discussion about reparations without really raising up how, you know, our chairman and our party have been able to organize white people for over 40 years around the question of, repar of the, around the question of reparations and have been winning reparations. People say, well, it's not possible. Oh, white people ain't never gonna give us our white people ain't. Well, one, we ain't gotta wait on nobody to give us nothing. Cause when the revolution happens, we gonna take our shit back. That's, that's right, one, that's they ain't right. gonna have a choice. Just like Haiti don't have a choice to pay back France right now. Right. And then also, too, is that it's happening right now today. We're receiving it's not some ambiguous conversation that we happen of how we're going to get reparations. The African People's Socialist Party is receiving reparations right now at 7.49 p.m. Central Standard Time right now from the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And if there's white people that's watching this um, and unite with what we're saying, then you need to join the Uhuru Solidarity uh, Movement. And if there's black people that work that, you know, that think you're working around the question of reparations, you need to join the African People's Socialist Party and organize your people and let white people go into the white community and do that um, kind of thing. Um, so, uh -huh. Uhuru. Uhuru. If, 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 if that was a poem, I'd do did something like this. You know what I'm saying? Right on, comrade. That was fire. And I'm going to I'm I'm uh, pass this next question on to Kundai since you're on the roll. And and in and, and one minute or less, or one minute and two seconds, how is this directly related to the work that you are involved in on the ground right here in Huntsville, Alabama? Um. Um, how is this work? Oh my God, I can't do this. Um, 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 I think it's okay in my work. Okay, I work in, the, in one of the economic institutions of the Uhuru movement, and so, um, I think one being able to have this type of uh, one, yeah, just being able to manage this type of space for us to talk about this, these kind of things, and to educate our people around the question of, uh, of reparations, um, uh, influ inc um, make people aware of our Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And um, I don't know, because it's not, because I don't really, I don't know, reparations, okay, okay, I know. Because reparations is a part of economic development, right? So we use reparations not to just to, put food on my table and his table or anybody else's table in the party. But um it's it's uh you know the um the uh um the reparations work happens under the office of the deputy chair, right? And the office of the deputy chair focuses on the economic work in our movement and, and when we talk about uh economics you know, this store is a part of that. Um, the work that the, the white people in our movement do is a part of economics is in it because we understand that politics is nothing more than concentrated economics. And so we going into the belly of the beast, we going into into the white community and we and we send the white people into the into the com white community to go and get our resources to create economic development for projects that work towards our liberation. Um uh yeah. Oh. Yeah, I appreciate that. And 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 the work that you know AppDev does is about building, you know, our own our own stuff, you know what I'm saying? And not depending on like uh Conrad Kundai said earlier, you know, whether they give a whether they give reparation or not, you know, we develop in the capacity to come and take what's ours and have the power to take what's ours 
whether they're giving it or not. Uh, we want to, the last question before we move to the next uh, session of the of the PE is uh, how does a better understanding of this point help to advance the work that you are involved in uh, on campaigns and struggles you might be uh, leading? Uh, and I'm gonna open this up for anybody that wanna that wanna answer. And but let's let's try to answer that question in 30 seconds or less. Her, I think in, in 30 seconds or less, I would say um, that we want to build a party, you know, join the African People's Socialist Party, you know, to build capacity, you know, that, that and, and get involved in all the campaigns that we have, you know, that we, we you know, are the party that highlights the, you know, building Black businesses to um, the, the, the things that um, Comrade Kundai just um, explained, you know, how we, you know, have an organized plan to, um, what to do with the reparations as they come in and to govern ourselves. And so I would encourage everyone to, um, to join the African People's Socialist Party to be a part of this awesome movement um, because it's all, all about power. It's about black power, it's about black people power. And we can, um, and we have to do that together uh, in unity, Uhuru. Uhuru, right on, right on. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the discussion. And, and uh, like Comrade Saeed just said, you know, in, in, in the process of us uh, fighting to meet all 14 points of the, of the 14 point platform, you know, this is why we put it in every newspaper because we want uh, the masses not only to hold us accountable, but for us to be able to show the trajectory that we own. That is not a spontaneous type of uh, organization or a social club. We have real intent in everything that we do. Everything that we do should reflect the 14 point platform of the African People's Socialist Party. And, 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 you know, and we have to be able to have a Vanguard organization like that, Vanguard of the African working class in order for us to get free. Because it's not just gonna happen that one day you wake up and, and you got your freedom. Just like it didn't happen that one day, you know, white people woke up and they had all your shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, we gonna have to have uh, 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 leaders and organizers that have they 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 purpose is to uh, develop the power and organize and take our stuff back and develop uh, develop a, a society for ourselves. That's going to take work, and if, and if people not uh, interested in doing that, then we saying that we we want to we want to stay slaves forever. We want to stay in in the hands of the colonizer forever. But if you are interested in being liberated and being in control of our own resources, being able to have the power to determine and, and, and make sure that our kids have a future and for us to determine a future for ourselves and, and, and our future generations, then join the African People's Social Party. Join the APSP. There's no other organization that I've heard that say that they want to take power, that they want power. So join the APSP. Let us know now or either go to uh, join, go to APSP Uhuru, and, and click on that join button and join and we will be in contact with you because we plan to build revolutionary organization that's gonna guarantee that our children will have a future just like everybody else's children. Ah, and we cannot allow them to continue to kill us and then expect them to do something different. They've been killing us for 500 years. So the most recent killings that we're seeing on, on Facebook and YouTube, and all these type of things, this is nothing new. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Mike Brown is Emmett Till, you know what I'm saying? And we have to be able to understand that because today they kill somebody else. You know what I'm saying? If we don't understand that, that we can't keep going death after death, we have to be able to organize ourselves to put an end to this and say, not one more African life. And the way that we do that is organization. The way that we do that is revolutionary uh, theory that we implement and put on the ground. So join the African People's Social Party, APSP, Yahoo.org. And, and also, in us doing and building, like uh, uh, they used to say, freedom ain't free. We have a goal that we have to raise today. We have a goal of raising $100. We want to be able to do that uh, in, in, this, in this political education to help forward and advance the African Revolution, help us to continue the work of, uh, of, of, of building our liberation right here in the Southern region. And I, and I always raise up Garvey because there's times when Garvey had the Black Star Line, you know, uh, uh, that was that was Africans all over the world that would donate sometimes even 10 cent, 10 cent 
Uh, they had 10 cents shares in, in the Guardian, but that's 10 cents towards your liberation. So there's no amount that's too small, and there's also no amount that's too big, whatever you think that you should give for our own liberation, for your liberation, because that's what we're about. And you can look at our history, 50 years. Uh, uh, next year will be 50 years of the African uh, People's Social Party, relentless, relentless, relentless in, in fighting for the liberation of African people uh, all over the world. Chairman O'Malley Zatella has, has, has been the last man standing and fighting to liberate Africa uh, from the black power struggle of the 60s. 50 years, 50 years we will be uh, celebrating next year and, and the only organization that has had that history of continuing. So let's raise this $100. And I'll start out today uh, myself with uh, $25. So we wanna, uh, wanna raise that money and, and you can cash out at dollar sign APSP South, dollar sign APSP South. You can make a donation right now. So let's see how we, we, we gonna uh, get this money. I think we can do it, comrade. I donated 20. Oh, we got Saeed for 20. That's what's up, that's what's up. Appreciate 15. that. And you do. 15. Yeah, 15. Appreciate that, comrade. And uh, Kundai said she had 10. That's what's up. That's what's up. I got 10 as well. That's what I like to hear. Comrade Dexter said he had 10 as well. Anybody? Hello, comrade. Uh, what say, Charlie? Oh, comrade. I got 20. Yeah, I got 20. So, uh, and I owe you 20 for last night. <laughs> So I, I, now I got the site. You gave it to me. It's dollar sign APSP. What was it? Dollar, dollar sign, sign APSP. Dollar sign APSP South. Dollar sign APSP South. It's APSP 5 South. Okay, got you. Yeah. All right. APSP I'm good South. for 20. I'm, I'm good for 40 all together. All right, that, that's what I like to hear, comrade. I like, I like it. You see, that's that's African, African people, social party, African internationalism principle. Comrade said, I ain't pay you for the last time, so I'm gonna pay you this time and for the last time. That, I like that honesty, comrade. Yeah, that's that's what's up. So let, let's let's make sure we get this, get these resources. Um, and um, so any, anybody else that want to donate before we before we move move to close out. I did ten dollars. That's what I'm talking about. Quick, quick. <laughs> Say quick, quick. I, I like that. I like that. So let's see. Let's let's go ahead and, and calculate. Uh, look like uh, uh, Big Mike. Big Mike sent ten too. That's what's up. Who come right, Mike? Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. And we gotta get y'all comrades coming to this LA next week. We're gonna build an audience right here because we believe in doing practical work right here on the ground where we at. We wanna win the African working class because it's gonna take us the African working class to make this thing, make this thing happen. And 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 can you uh so I wanna I wanna also uh invite everybody on the call. I know we had some first timers and uh and I know some people was having problems getting on. We gotta really resolve that. Uh, I just want to really acknowledge, you know, uh, everybody that came on. And I was really, you know, uh, my little cousin, <laughs> he's my little big cousin now. He done came on a couple times and keep falling off, so I don't know what's going on. But it, he had missed on that. But I, I really appreciate everybody coming on. And uh, comrades, we just raised $110. And it don't mean that you that you, if you, if you didn't donate or, or you know, you got to wait to... The first and the fifteenth, you know what I'm saying? You want to, you want to, you know, we 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 might get to a point where we take uh, EBT cards and all that. But right now, I appreciate everybody. I appreciate. Uh, I'm joking now, but I appreciate everybody that made the contribution and everybody that wanted to uh, but couldn't at the time. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate everybody being on the call, comrades. Next time y'all come on, make sure you bring somebody else because we got to have real discussion. And we got to really have real struggle because right now they, they they put these type of political discussions in front of us that lead us nowhere, that lead us to places into, into a desert where it doesn't not, not only does it not explain anything and what's happening, it misleads you to think that 
you involved in something that's gonna that's gonna liberate you, that's gonna change your life. And the only thing that it does is bring you back into the embrace of the parties that exist to exploit you, which is the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and all these parties that represent uh, this U.S. government, the state. So we want to make sure that we are having a real discussion and, and cut through all the fluff and say, how do we get free? I want to be free. I want to guarantee that my children are going to be free. I want to be able to have the power that will not only prevent you from doing something to me, but it also will give us the power to build the type of government that's going to work in our best interest and not going to play games with people's lives. So comrades, we appreciate for y'all being here. We appreciate uh, 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 for everybody coming on. We also want to invite y'all to the African People's uh, Socialist Party uh, plenary, the third plenary uh, of the of the uh, seventh Congress, which is happening February the 11th through the 14th. It's going to be a Zoom uh, meeting, and if you can, make sure you register. Uh, for that as well. That's happening February the, 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 the 11th through the 14th. Um, and, and we're putting the link right in there now in, into the chat. And it's going to be, again, February the 14th, uh, the 11th through the 14th is going to be dynamic. And it's going to be talking about all the work that's happening to liberate Africa and African people and bring about African unity. People say that, well, African people just, black people just can't unite. Come and check the part out, because African people are uniting all over the world and have been doing it for 50 years. But they don't want to tell you about that. They want to tell you about something else. So come and uh, check the party out. And the link that is in the chat. Check us out, and let's build uh, this revolution, and let's take power and uh, uh, build a future for ourselves. Comrades, without further ado, is that if there's any questions about anything that we just discussed before we close out, anybody want to say how they how they enjoyed this or anything that you want to say before we close out uh, and, 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 and wrap it up for the next time. Next, it's going to be next week, same time, same bad station. It'll be our first meeting, first PE of 2022. But anything that anybody want to say before we close out. Uh, I got a couple announcements for just like assignment and advent. Uh, so the first one is that if you guys are on Facebook, everybody that's um, tuned in on the, or on the Zoom, um, you guys can check in to Zinzaleki Simon on Facebook. Let people know that you engaged in this political education today that's being hosted in the store so we can get some more people in here. That's first thing. And then second thing is um, AppDev uh, is, is hosting a Kwanzaa event here on Saturday. That's the last day of Kwanzaa, which is Imani Faith. Uh, Kobina Bantushango is going to be our keynote speaker. So um, anybody that's viewing that's local, uh, come to the store at 3 p.m. Um, the event is on Facebook, uh, on the um, store page, on Zins Lake Consignment or AAPDEP, A-A-P-D-E-P. -E uh, but you come to Zins Lake Consignment on Saturday, this Saturday at 3 p.m. for a revolutionary discussion around uh, faith, faith in the people and faith in the uh, revolution. And we also have the um, AAPDEP Cuba trip summation um, a, a discussion here at the store on January 23rd as well. Uh -huh. All right, comrades, and uh, without further ado, I appreciate everybody being here and Vanguard up. Vanguard up. Uh -huh. Vanguard up. Vanguard up. Uh -huh. Vanguard up. Uh -huh. Vanguard up. Right on. Be relentless. Be relentless, comrade. <laughs> you know that.